I'm Hugo Sonnenschein. Uh, I'm professor of economics at the University of Chicago, president emeritus of the university, and it's a very nice day for me. Professor Sonnenschein, what is the significance of this award and how do you value this award? Well, it's a great honor to be recognized by the BBVA uh, Foundation. Uh, they have selected marvelous people in the past and one can only feel uh, extraordinarily pleased to be uh, joining uh, that group. In economics last year, they presented this award to Jean Tirol, who's a good friend of mine, and it's really a particular pleasure to share this award with Andreo Mascolet, who uh, is a former student of mine at the University of Minnesota, a dear friend, a person who I have the greatest respect for, and just to be um, coupled with him in this way is a dream. A major part of the reason that this award means so very much to me is the long association that I've had uh, with Spain, um, primarily through my uh, former students, uh, the role that they've played in my economics and the role that they've played in my life. Uh, my trips to Barcelona, to Madrid, uh, to Bilbao, um, meeting Andreo uh, Mascolet, who I'm being honored with, uh, but so very many more uh, outstanding uh, Spanish economists who I've learned from, who I had the great pleasure to teach, uh, Salvador Barbera, Javier Ruiz Castillo, Isabel Fradera. Uh, it's a very long list and I, I really can't start it because it's, um, it simply uh, goes on and on and on. And I'm sure I'll, I'll miss one, but there are uh, so many uh, good friends and outstanding economists. Uh, it, it's been an important part of my life and, and again, part of the way that I learned. How do you see this award within the context of economy or economics as a discipline? Well, general equilibrium models are really the cornerstone of the basic theory of value that economists use. Theory of value means that this is the model that's used to explain uh, why commodities have the prices that they have, why our services um, are priced uh, the way they are. And so it's the model that's always turned to. Um, the work that I did uh, followed work in the 1950s of Arrow, De Bruyne, uh, Lionel McKenzie, and as is always the case, one stands on the shoulders of the people who uh, came before. Some of that work, in fact, the work of, of Arrow and Debrud, some of that work was at the University of Chicago. And I played a hand uh, in determining the possibilities and the limitations of this um, workhorse model that economists use all of the time. Um, so the model is key, it's central, uh, but it's quite an, an imperfect model. It's a model that's still being developed and people will come along and eventually uh, do better. Uh, when I speak to students, I explain to them that this is the workhorse model that we talk about. Uh, it's what I'll be teaching, in fact, uh, uh, tomorrow. Um, this is the model that explains when you impose a, a tax how the prices of goods will change in response to that, um, how welfare will change. If you have technological progress in an economy, it's what explains the welfare effects. Um, so it's used um, just quite, quite completely uh, in economic science. My work and the work of uh, Professor Mascolet uh, was particularly concerned with the mathematical structure of these models. Uh, my own contribution uh, 
is thought of as um, explaining that there was a greater amount of complexity uh, in these models that some people thought uh, was the case, um, that you could only go so far in these models without making particular assumptions about the tastes of preferences, about the technology um, that was available to the society. Um, my result is sometimes referred to as anything goes, anything's possible. Um, and I would rather think of it as saying that to really understand what's going on, you have to get beyond the bare bones theory. The jury is, has highlighted your contribution to the theory of general equilibrium. In your opinion, what has been the contribution of this theory to the understanding of how economics works as a system? Well, the general equilibrium theory really is the, the explanation of how prices are determined by tastes, technology, and the distribution of wealth. And to get that right and really understand it is a major achievement of, of economic science that, as I said, was, was started in its um, modern form in the, in the 50s. Um, and um, this, this workhorse model is just uh, exactly that. It's, it's seen throughout economics. It's what uh, economists are taught particularly in graduate school as a, as a um, central part um, of their education. But again, part of what I like to emphasize to them is that it's not a finished piece of work. Um, our um, combined work, which clarified uh, technical matters which showed exactly how far the Arrow de Bruy model could go um, uh, helped us uh, use the model, helped us understand what was possible with it. But I have absolutely no, no doubt, and as you look at current economic crises, it's clear that there will be uh, new ways of looking how value is formed. In fact, uh, Jean Tirole's award last year uh, concerned some of these uh, new ways, matters of asymmetric uh, information. Uh, so this is all a work in progress. It's very exciting. Regarding your work on aggregated demand, how has this work influenced the work of others? The work on aggregating demand is probably the work that I'm best known for. Um, since I was very young, I was able to be bold, and my bold statement was that uh, even though uh, there were very strong restrictions in the world of just one consumer, uh, if you looked at real situations where you had an economy with many consumers, then um, the uh, um, theory of agents being rational um, and choosing the uh, best bundle that they could afford had relatively little implications for the general structure of demand. Uh, that took a lot of guts to, to imagine. Uh, my first proof of this was, was awkward and was regarded by leaders of the field as something of an outrage. Um, it was followed by a, a marvelous paper by um, Gerard de Bruy, who improved substantially uh, on what I had done. And before de Bruy, uh, a paper by um, Rolf Bantel, uh, which uh, together Mantel and de Bruy's work really uh, finished this problem. There were things added. Everybody got their nickels and dimes afterward, but but uh, that that um, strong conjecture, somewhat outrageous conjecture, 
of mine led to um, wonderful papers um, by, by others and really led to a clear understanding of the structure of demand in a market economy. Uh, you ask about aggregate demand, uh, and this in fact is the work that I'm, I'm best known for. Um, as a graduate student, I was taught a great deal of the theory of individual demand functions. Um, and this is the theory that we inherited from Samuelson and from Hicks. Uh, this was the great work uh, of the early uh, mid-1900s. Uh, um, and it was very important because it helped us to understand the way that rational economic agents would react to changes in prices, how their demands would change when prices would change. And this was the basic theory we were taught. And for the lack of a better way of doing things, we continue to use the same theory when it came to situations when there were a large number um, of consumers and producers. And even though that was patently a bit wrong, uh, I think we didn't at all acknowledge and understand how, how wrong that specification was. It was really just the, the hubris of a, uh, a young person who didn't know any better uh, to say, well, you know, I'm going to attack this problem and my first try will be to say that all of the special structural conditions that follow when you have one individual simply disappear when you have many people. Uh, when you're dealing with a, a true economy, a real economy, with many consumers, many firms, uh, where the distribution of, of income matters and where the amounts of commodities that people hold at the beginning uh, matters. Um, and I was able to push through a crude proof that in fact, when you look properly uh, at the situation where there were many economic agents, the true situation, that all of the restrictions we had been taught uh, and we had naively believed might carry over, um, just disappeared. Um, uh, and I think it actually was Andreo Mascolé who named this uh, Anything Goes many years later. Um, so another bond um, uh, between us. I think there really was a certain amount of naivete. It was a young person's uh, stab. And uh, it went a long ways, um, uh, improved upon very substantially by, by Ralf Mantel, a wonderful Argentinian economist trained at Yale who died young uh, and then uh, very substantially improved upon by, um, by um, Gerard de Bruy, uh, a close friend of both Andreo Mascolais and mine. Um, but uh, what I guessed was uh, shown to be quite correct. Uh, my awkward proof was improved upon, and I suspect that more than anything else that I have done, it was that piece of work and what it led to, what it led to in terms of, I think, a little bit more humility on the part of economists. Uh, in understanding that you, you really had to know specifically what the preferences were, specifically what the technology was, uh, specifically the distribution of wealth to understand um, aggregate market demand properly. Um, great fun, great fun. Do you think your work has an actual true influence in everyday life? Well, Keynes had this statement that uh, people may not realize it, but they wind up be, being the slaves to some poor economist uh, who they never knew 
um, economics matters and economic models matter. Um, they matter a lot in policy. Uh, this is not a, um, a game of just being clever. This is a game with very, very important implications. Our theories, when they're good, are taken seriously. And it's been a you know, great honor to be involved in work that has a very real and serious um, application. The nature of this work, um, the general equilibrium theories, is such that its influence is, is ubiquitous. And in some ways, people get it quickly. They understand that the way that prices are determined is uh, quite complicated that my demand for uh, automobiles depends not only on the price tag of the automobile, but on the cost of gasoline, which I need to run the automobile. And it depends also on what my income is. And when you put all of these forces together in an economy with many, many people, you get a good picture of what determines um, value. Uh, and it's a subtle picture and it's a deep picture and it's um, it helps us understand what's really going on. More in general, do you think the work of theoreticians has a strong enough impact in practical economy, quote unquote? Everybody who seriously wants to face the issue of how, let's say, a discovery of some minerals in the country, um, the decision to put a tax on some commodities, a change in technology, anybody who seriously wants to investigate how people will be affected by these individual changes has to come to grips with uh, the tremendous dependence that exists in a competitive economy. And they do that by, by using this, this model. That's it for the questions. I guess the floor is yours. Was anything you wanted to add? You know, it, it is, uh, I, I've only just learned of this award. Um, it means a great deal to me. One of the, um, one of the nice experiences that Professor Mascolet and I share is that after our um, foundational work, which we both did at a relatively young age. We both had time to, um, in other ways, um, give back to the institutions that made our work possible. So we both became um, quite interested and quite involved in um, uh, leading, supporting, uh, helping uh, universities to um, to be strong, uh, to be the best kind of place for young scholars, um, students, um, and so in addition to the fact that we uh, um, have done uh, similar work and that our paths have crossed in other ways, we have this this other attribute which I think is very important on this occasion. Let me speak briefly about uh, the importance of this award and what it means to me. First, I noticed that BBVA, uh, the foundation, um, gives these awards in a collection of areas which mean a lot for the human condition. And I'm sure when they were contemplating uh, what areas would be worthy of these awards, they thought, they thought very carefully uh, about that. Uh, and I'm very pleased, of course, that they included um, economics in this group. Uh, it's important for me um, to make a clear statement that I believe economics uh, really matters. A good understanding of economics really matters. Um, we may not always get it right, uh, and the challenges are great. Uh, we should not be held responsible uh, when there's economic failure, and we as economists should not be held responsible and get all of the glory um, when um, 
the economy is good, but we are listened to. And it is very clear to me that a good understanding uh, of the economic system, a good basic hard-nosed understanding uh, of the economic system is a very key part uh, of the society being able to deliver to its people a good life, uh, a better life. Um, and that's why we do economics. We do it because we believe that a better understanding of economic matters uh, is important for economic policy. Uh, and I'm, I'm very pleased to make my own modest contributions.